guests for our Sunday festival. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic which is befitting the occasion. Today is the one of the most important days for devotees in ISKCON. Any guesses? What is it today? Srila Prabhupada arrived in the United States of America on this day. So this day has become very special for those who are sincere followers of Srila Prabhupada. So on this occasion we will discuss how Srila Prabhupada entered USA. This is a very vast subject and uh, I am not sure if we will be able to uh, discuss the subject matter fully. But whatever little we can discuss for the purification of our own heart and for the pleasure of their Lordship Sri Shada Gopinath will glorify their purest devotee Srila Prabhupada who so mercifully um, travelled across the ocean, left the shores of India following the order of his spiritual master to give Krishna consciousness to everyone. If you see Srila Prabhupada's pastimes, especially till he established ISKCON in 1966. If you see his pastimes from 1896 when he appeared in this world till 1966, it is simply setbacks, one setback after another. So if somebody wants to study the subject matter on failures as stepping stone to success, then the most inspiring example will be Srila Prabhupada whose life was nothing but one failure or one setback after another. His business collapsed five times. He made major investments and each time, sometimes initial success but eventually failure. And the institutional support also the institution founded by spiritual master eventually broke apart because of politics and fights. So that shelter also was not there. Financial support was not there. Family life slowly crumbled. So eventually if you see Srila Prabhupada's failures and setbacks were many. A normal person will not be able to handle but Srila Prabhupada displayed unflinching faith in the order of his spiritual master, which is unprecedented and it is unfathomable by us. So we will discuss how even after coming to USA, it was not a easy, smooth, it's not that people were waiting with garlands <laughs> and America, pure devotee has come, you know, now his con will start. No, it was again failures after failures. So therefore, we will understand what are these challenges that Srila Prabhupada faced today. For a few minutes, we will discuss. And through this, we will we'll increase our appreciation and meditation on how we are so fortunate that we have been given this gift of Krishna Consciousness by a person who had to go through so much difficulty to give us Krishna Consciousness and we have got it so easily. And many times, we take it for granted. Prasanga Majaram Pasham Kavayo Atmano Vidu Saeva Sadusho Kruto Moksha Dwaram Apavrutam Lord Kapiladev tells his mother Devavati that material attachment is very painful. It is like a pasha of an ajara. It is like a python's noose. It only causes unlimited suffering. And this is declared by Kavayo Atmano Vidu by most intelligent people. But at the same time Saeva Sadusho Kruto if we can develop that same intensity of attachment to Krishna's pure devotees, moksha dwaram apavrutam, it will open the doors of liberation. So we are very fortunate that by hearing about Srila Prabhupada, by reading Srila Prabhupada's pastimes, we can develop this attachment to Srila Prabhupada. And then an eternal life is guaranteed. So we are entering this pastime now, when Srila Prabhupada has got <coughs> a free ticket on a Sindhya steamship company owned by Mrs. Sumati Morarji, who is a very pious Gujarati lady and she 
had already sponsored Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavatam sets, first volume. And she had, for that sponsor, Srila Prabhupada had to wait five hours outside her office. And he was so patient and perseverant. And finally, she sponsored his Bhagavatam. She encouraged Srila Prabhupada. And when he finally uh, proposed a plan to go to the America, and when he, when he told her that he wants to go and all his papers are ready, she said, Swamiji will not be able to bear America. It's, it's, you are very old. You are 70 years old. How can you go there? It will be too much for you. In fact, she told him you will die. Srila Prabhupada dismissed it as a, as a foolish rumor. He said, no, no, nothing. Don't worry. You just give me a free passage on your cargo ship. So finally she agreed. She saw his determination and she agreed and she gave him a ticket. So now he is all set to leave. Now he has been meditating. Srila Prabhupada has been meditating on this journey to America for last 43 years. In a sense, he was thinking of how to spread Krishna consciousness since 1922 when his spiritual master ordered him. Finally he is going. Now what we are going to discuss briefly for the next few minutes is how what Srila Prabhupada is now embarking upon is logically and materially the most foolish thing to do. We will use material calculation to understand how what Srila Prabhupada is doing was very foolish because it is impossible. What Srila Prabhupada is planning to achieve is impossible by material logical explanation. And this only leads us to the conclusion that this is the this is the desire, strong desire of a pure devotee to glorify Krishna. There is no other explanation for this. Krishna's reciprocation with the desires of his pure devotee is the only, log only explanation for the way Krishna consciousness was established. So we have to understand the circumstances in which Krishna consciousness was established. So logically and materially there are many reasons, more than ten reasons to understand how this this cannot happen. What Srila Prabhupada is planning to do cannot happen. First is, externally if you see, Srila Prabhupada has only faced failures. And now he is embarking upon the most ambitious project of all time. It's not that in India he already established many centers and everything is established. Now he is planning to go to America. So this is the first a reason which really amazed me. His business collapsed. His preaching also was not successful in India. Finally, one, one actual success was about to come. He was about to get a chance to go to Japan. And uh, Dr. Nakano was corresponding with him. Finally, everything was set. Only one ticket he couldn't arrange. He didn't have even that much Lakshmi that he could, he could not even arrange. One ticket, one passage to Japan. That was his struggle. So that also couldn't happen. And back to Godhead magazine, he was distributing in the streets of New Delhi. People ridiculing him challenging him. Once he fell unconscious in the streets of New Delhi in the summer of, you know how hot it is in the summer. He got a stroke and he fell. And some person was going in the car, recognized Srila Prabhupada. He got out of the car and took Srila Prabhupada. So many difficulties. He, he, would, he would not even have uh, breakfast. He would go to the printer and the printer would ask him, so, Swamiji, have you taken uh, any breakfast? He had not eaten anything in the night. He had not eaten anything in the breakfast also. Shri so Prabhupada would say, no, no, let this get completed first. So, that person would realize that he has not eaten anything and then he would arrange some something, some juice and some food like that. So, Shri Prabhupada was very focused, but he was not getting material success. And now, he is planning to go to America to establish Krishna consciousness. This is amazing. So this is now, there is an elderly old Swami who is going to America on a very vaguely defined mission. Now the first reason, or the, or the, rather the second reason why it's externally, we have to understand, this is not logical, is Srila Prabhupada has no prior knowledge about America when he is going to America. If you are going to preach in a place, you need to know what, what is that country, what, what are those people likes, dislikes, Srila Prabhupada himself admitted that he had no knowledge about America. So much so that first time when he saw snow, snowfall, in, in the morning when he got up and he saw in the night there was a snowfall and there was... But he didn't realize it was a snowfall. He saw that all the buildings have been painted white. <laughs> he was wondering what is this. 
So first of all, no knowledge about America. Sometimes, some people, you know, they may go to a place, <coughs> even though they have had failures, even though they don't have any knowledge about that place. But still they may go if there is some base or support there. Like when we go for preaching, we know that there is some base, voice. We just have to go. Mm, already everything is arranged. We just have to give lecture, meet people, come back. There is some support, some base, something already is established. So we go there. But Srila Prabhupada is going to America. It's not that there was some big support system or some centers of Gaudiya Mutt. No, nothing was there. No support. Okay, sometimes you may not have any support also. You may not have knowledge about a place. But if you have one thing, then you can go any place. What is that? Money. Like many missionaries, they go to different places. They may not have support. But they have money, so they can do so many things. Now, Srila Prabhupada, what money he had? He says he had enough money that was equal, that was enough uh, for spending only for a few hours in America. In a few hours that money could be over. That much money he had carried with him. And that also, incidentally, he didn't spend it in America. He bought it back, that rupees, when he came in 1969, when he came to 67, 60, 68, when he came to India from San Francisco when he came, he, got, he bought that money with him and he used that money to go from New Delhi to Chippewada by taxi. That same money, <laughs> 40 rupees. <clears throat> so he had no money, no support, no knowledge about America. Okay, if all this is not there, still it is okay. Still you can go to a new place and preach. If you at least have a clear plan of action. Srila Prabhupada admitted he didn't have a plan of action. He didn't say that first I will do journey of self-discovery course, then follow-up course, <laughs> or first I will do stress management course. We have all these strategies we make. So this is, this is a very important point. Preaching, we have so much of strategies. We make so much plans. We have so many meetings. When we are preaching, and I am preaching in one place, and we meet every week, so much meetings, meetings, meetings. And then when we read Vilamrut, we see amazing Srila Prabhupada didn't have all these plans, you know, first I'll go to Boston, then I'll go to New York, then I'll do this, then I'll do that. And then, Srila Prabhupada also, he, he admitted that he would move about aimlessly on the streets of New York, not knowing what is going to happen. And if all this is not sufficient reason to understand how this is, what is happening is inconceivable, the most amazing thing is, where did Srila Prabhupada live when he went to America? He lived in Bauri and there also where these artists and hippies would stay and he rented a storefront which is the most horrible place in America. It is like you can imagine one of the worst areas in Mumbai where there are prostitutes, drug lords and you know crazy, homeless people wandering about. Imagine somebody living in that place and starting a worldwide spiritual movement. <laughs> so, where Prabhupada lived also makes it highly improbable for Krishna consciousness to spread all over the world. And, okay, if this is not sufficient, we have to also understand, <coughs> understand the time in which Srila Prabhupada was planning to spread Krishna consciousness. This was the 1960s, the drug and counterculture movement. This was a movement of when everybody was going against the established cultural norms and there was a lot of emphasis on drug addiction. So much so that even now, uh, 45, 50 years almost, people still think ISKCON means drug, you know, some, <laughs> some people think that, you know, there are some drugs being sold here and all that. So it was such a, such an impact of the 1960s. This was the age of, it, it is a very important period in the history of uh, the 20th century. That 1960s was the time when a lot of upheavals are happening on the social scene. And that time Srila Prabhupada goes there. And where does he establish this? In the heart of 1960, which is New York, there in Bauri. And it, this, is, this is so improbable. You know, what Srila Prabhupada is doing is like, it's like there is a cyclone going on and in the middle of that cyclone you make a house. 
or you, or you make a or a tsunami wave is coming and there you stand and you build something what, what it's like huge cyclone of material energy is you know destroying everything and in that shri prabhupada is building a house where the whole world can live by establishing iskon should understand the time the circumstances the place in which shri prabhupada was presenting this most sublime gift of krishna consciousness and if this is all not sufficient what is most amazing is what was shila prabhupad presenting in this period of time place and circumstances he is preaching exactly opposite of what the social scene was at that time he is preaching sexual restraint he is preaching people to abstain from drugs and he is preaching purity of mind and is preaching most importantly devotion to krishna so we should understand he is not he is not telling about he is not giving indirect you know we have so many seminars making of a corporate athlete we go and give this seminar in colleges or stress management he didn't give such kind of seminars direct krishna consciousness he was giving i remember in some colleges we go we are not allowed so we go with the title of stress management so they allow us and then we give lecture and first we speak here and there definition of stress and symptoms of stress finally we come and the best example of stress first chapter of bhagavad gita arjuna we give arjuna symptoms <laughs> and then we order the solution chant hari krishna <laughs> so like that indirectly we have to go around beat around the bush finally we give this and finally we get response sheet so many people say we liked and all that and three or four smart people in that audience they write in the response sheet we know your agenda was to give hare krishna only <laughs> but you told the stress management so when we read the response sheet you know we smile we say okay this person is actually intelligent he knows our intention he knows that we actually wanted to give hare krishna but uh, you know we but shila prabhupada was not doing all that he didn't he was giving krishna he was presenting wonderful krishna just just as he was presenting the message as it is in such a crazy mad atmosphere and the best part is to whom was he preaching all this to was it that there was some gujarati society or indian society in new york to whom he was giving lectures he was preaching to young boys and girls who had two sutras and two mantras in their life shila propa that maha mantra and they, these people also had two mantras one mantra was do your own thing that was their mantra do your own thing what you feel like just do it if you feel like enjoying enjoy to tell them follow discipline follow the process follow vaidhi sadhana bhakti even to them if shila propada prevented raganuga just spontaneous sahajya type that also is understandable <laughs> but to them shila propada is saying follow this system process and the second mantra this hippies had was do not trust anyone who is above 30 years of age <laughs> and what was shila propada's age when he went to america it was more than double <laughs> the 70 so this is the background and who is swami ji who is shila prabhupada is going there he is an he is a orthodox traditional uh, vaishnava from a very nice cultured family born in not even the 20th century he was in the 19th century 1896 he was born you know and in the 20th century is going there so he is from a previous century actually <laughs> in one sense so as uh, a traditional vaishnava from a religious family cultured family and here is this old gentleman sadhu sanyasi coming to this kind of environment to preach this message and what happens then is a remarkable story of faith devotion and success which is beyond human comprehension and human ex- explanation you cannot explain this in fact uh, i won't you know we should not be surprised if after some decades maybe after our lifetime it it is highly probable that people will read shila prabhupas past times and shila prabhupas life many people with shock and skepticism they may think this is mythology 
now we know it is true because we have evidences we have books and we have you know it's but just like nowadays some people are very skeptical how chaitanya mahaprabhu how he could have gone to jharkhand forest and made elephants and tigers and you know snakes dance and chant sometimes people think actually hua tha kya aisa it has happened it's historical it's it's recorded in chaitanya charitamrita mahaprabhu made tigers and deer embrace each other that was the power of chanting of hari krishna and chaitanya mahaprabhu's potency some people suspect oh could it have happened it happened prabhu said it happened only recently 500 years ago still people think it is mythology so another few years down the line people may think shila prabhu pad need such animal kind of people there these people are like animals actually living in new york bauri at that time they were like animals loitering on the street living in the gutter and such animal kind of people shila prabhu pad made them chant and dance and follow purely krishna conscious principles this is impossible to believe given the circumstances in which shila prabhu pad went it it could be you know it's possible that skeptics may will will find it too shocking hmm? therefore we have to take these words very seriously of one dr thomas hopkins who is a very famous uh, scholar in america so he made a historical report on the the way iskon started and he writes a very nice statement he says shri prabhupada's life and establishing of krishna consciousness and coming to america and the way he did it proves he he is not a hare krishna devotee huh? dr thomas hopkins he is he is an american research scholar and he says shila prabhupada's life proves that there is a spiritual power that cannot be pinned down with logic and he says even all books in this world cannot completely answer this question how this happened this is god's power therefore life of shila prabhupada is a tangible proof of a spiritual reality this this scholar writes that life of shila prabhupada is a tangible proof of a spiritual reality that there is some reality which is beyond our comprehension he admits this and second he says this is also proof of love of god if somebody has love of god what can happen is this hmm. so this is the way this is the background or this is the foundation of shila prabhupada's success this is krishna's power and who was this person who was behind the secret of how it happened is revealed in shila prabhupada's journey to america he leaves india on a very inauspicious day according to christian calendar is going to america it is 13th date 13th of august friday friday the 13th hmm. and he leaves uh, in 1965 and 13th and the 14th day is problem start yes yeah, sea sickness vomiting fever and there's a lot of rain on the journey and more sickness finally on the 19th after a few days from calcutta is comes to colombo from colombo then the next day is janmashtami and the ship shila prabhupad prepares a feast gives a class on krishna's pastimes to the ship people captain panda is also there and his wife so they are also recipients of prabhupada's mercy prabhupada cooks a nice feast for them and 21st is next day is shila prabhupada's birthday quietly he just chants he does his uh, spiritual activities and then from colombo from calcutta it has come to colombo now ship is entering arabian sea and as this jalduta the ship enters arabian sea shila prabhupada's health goes from bad to worse he starts getting intense chest pain and recurring heart attacks he just tolerates tolerates and the pain is intense and as this pain is happening he is uh, focusing on two things he just tries to understand what is my mission in life what is the purpose of my going what am i what do i really want and second thing he intensely remembers krishna he prays to krishna and as he is praying to krishna and he is sleeping in that chest pain he gets a dream shri prabhupada actually experiences a vision where lord krishna comes on a boat in his beautiful dress yellowish dress and beautiful garments and jewelry and peacock feather 
Krishna is rowing this boat and he looks at Srila Prabhupada and says, Do not fear, just come along. And he holds Srila Prabhupada by hand and takes him on his boat. And then Srila Prabhupada wakes up from that vision and he sees there is no pain. And then the ship continues, they go through the Atlantic. But now he has a different kind of pain. He feels intense pain of separation, spiritual pain. He starts remembering Vrindavan. He's, because he is living a wonder, ex, even externally wonderful Krishna conscious atmosphere to go to an unknown land. So he is feeling separation. Oh, I am living Bharat Bhumi. I am living Vrindavan. And he starts writing his diary. He says, my only solace and relief is Chaitanya Charitamrit. He says, I have no qualification to do this service, but I am completely dependent on Krishna's mercy. And he starts writing a diary and there he says, today I have disclosed my mind to my companion and dear friend. Who is Prabhupada's companion and dear friend? Krishna. So, Srila Prabhupada would offer intense prayers. And then Atlantic ocean is very smooth. Actually, Atlantic Ocean had been rough. If the weather had been rough during that period, Srila Prabhupada's health would have worsened. But now because Krishna has taken charge of the ship, because he himself came and assured, uh, it becomes very smooth. Like when Vasudeva was carrying Krishna, you know, Yamuna made way, everything, all obstacles were removed. So when Srila Prabhupada was going through this Atlantic Ocean, all, all, uh, he was carrying Krishna. He was carrying Krishna's message. And Srila Prabhupada recognizes this and Srila Prabhupada writes in his diary, Krishna has taken charge of the ship, I can see, <laughs> he's taken complete charge. And there he writes, um, <coughs> he writes a beautiful uh, bhajan, song, it's, it's outpouring of the heart, Krishna Tabha Punya Habe Bhai. And there he reveals his intimate relationship with Krishna. Now this was not written for public consumption, this was not written to show the world that he has love for Krishna. This was written in his personal diary and it was kept in his trunk and his disciples discovered it years later. So, Srila Prabhupada had written, it was his heart's outpouring and in that song he writes, how I am going only because the order of my spiritual master. And he says, all this will happen because of the desire of my spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Sri Siddhanta Saraswati, Sachi Sutta Priya Hati. Krishna Sebai Jara Tula Nai Se Se Mohanta Guru Jagatera Madehuru Krishna Bhakti De Taita. My Guru Maharaj wants Krishna to be given to everyone, and that's why I am going. I have no power, I have no qualification. Tara Icha Balavan Pascha Ete Tanatan Loe Jaye Gaurangera Nam Prithivite Nagaradi. Asamudra Nara Nari Sakalehi Loe Krishna Naam. He says, Tara Icha Balavan. It is the desire of my spiritual master which is very strong. And by that desire, Lord Gauranga's name will go in every town and village. It's not that I am going, I am somebody great. Very beautiful, heart touching prayer he writes. And as he first reveals his relationship with his Guru, and his mission, how he is dependent on his Guru's mercy and he wants to only exclusively serve his spiritual master. And towards the end of the prayer, he writes about his intimate relationship with Krishna. Tomara milane bhai, abhara se sukha pai, gocharane ghuri dina bora, katabane chutta chutti, bane khaye luta putti, sei dina kabe habe mora. He says, Tomara Milane Bhai, oh my dear brother Krishna, oh my dear friend. Abhara se sukha pai, I want to meet you. You know, in that song he's saying, I am feeling separation from me, I want to meet you and feel great joy. When will I meet you and go charane ghuri dina bor? When we will go in the forest of Vrindavan herding cows? When will that time come? And katta banne chutta chutti, banne kai lutta putti. When will we wrestle and frolic on the pasturing grounds of Vrindavan. When will we wrestle and, you know, play and have fun in the forest of Vrindavan? Say din kabe habe more. When will that day come back again? This was Srila Prabhupada's absorption in Krishna. He was meditating on how he wants to be with Krishna again. And then in the last, but it's not that it's Sahajya kind of thing, you know, in the very next stanza he reveals, 
His actual position is his servant of Krishna. Aji se subida ne tumara swana ne belo bado asha dakilam tai ami tumar nitya das tai koro ete ash tuma bina anya gati nai. I have no other desire my dear Krishna. I only want to be your servant. To ami tumar nitya das. So this is uh, Srila Prabhupada's mood in great absorption and remembrance of Krishna he goes to America. This is how he is travelling to America feeling intense separation, remembering Bharat Bhumi, remembering Radha Govind, Radha Madan Mohan, Radha Gopinath, remembering Vrindavan and taking shelter of Chaitanya Charitamrit and remembering his intimate relationship with Krishna. He enters Boston Commonwealth Pyre. The, sh the ship reaches after one month. And when he reaches America, this is the first, this is the first darshan of America. <laughs> Shri Prabhupada is getting. Hmm? So as he has come to America, and this is night time, he is seeing dazzling lights. And he is seeing the beauty of America. Actually then, it is actually daytime. then he sees all the wonderful buildings, everything he is seeing. And it is dazzling. And the ship is going through Boston and it is going to New York. Uh, yeah, it's going to New York, but it's going through Boston. So, there, Srila Prabhupada is seeing the beauty of America in its all splendor. So, uh, what is Srila Prabhupada's response when he sees this? In all this dazzling light, he is seeing darkness. He is feeling extremely sad seeing this, how people are in ignorance. Srila Prabhupada's vision was completely different from a materialistic. If a materialistic person wants to go to America, if he goes to America, when his first sight of America, he will feel, wow, you know, <laughs> when he sees the so-called beauty of America, he will be ecstatic. Once one devotee was giving Bhagavatam class here, he had come from America. The whole Bhagavatam class is speaking about America. <laughs> how there is four-lane traffic, how there is this and that. And people are wondering, wow, he's speaking, like, you know, we have not been attracted to Golok Vrindavan as much. <laughs> as the way he is describing America. Srila Prabhupada is seeing all that beauty, but he is feeling people are suffering. He is feeling compassion. He is feeling sorry. This is a very important point, because when Srila Prabhupada was in India, and he was staying at Andheri, at this India steamship colony, preparing to go to America, and he was preparing all his things, Sumati Muraji's secretary and few people at the India steamship company office, they would make fun of Srila Prabhupada. They would tell him, Swamiji, we know why, we, why you are going to America. Because you are old, you are 70 years old, before dying, once you want to see <laughs> America. <laughs> and as they would laugh, Srila Prabhupada would also laugh with them, thinking that, you know, they are joking like that. But Srila Prabhupada had no desire to see America. That was not the desire. He is feeling, oh, they are suffering. When he is seeing all the splendor and beauty and glamour of America, he is feeling, oh, these people are suffering. Actually, this is compassion. And only when you have this compassion, you can preach. Actually, you know, when you see a billionaire, sometimes we see some big industrialists or big people and we feel, ah, he's preaching. Karenge. We are excited about preaching to them. No? But pure devotee, when he sees a billionaire or when he sees somebody very famous, glamorous, he doesn't feel, wow, he's coming to temple, you know, now let me, let me preach to him. No, he feels, bechara, karodpati hai. He feels bechara, he feels, oh, sad for him. You know, I need to give him Krishna consciousness. He doesn't feel, he doesn't feel, wow. <laughs> That is the pure devotee's mood. Hmm? Srila Prabhupada's understanding, we should, we should know this uh, verse from Bhagavad Gita. Ya nisha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagriti sanyami. Tasyam jagriti bhutani sa nisha pashvato mune. What is night for a materialistic person is a day time for a pure devotee. And what is day for a pure devotee is night for a materialistic. It's ulta. Srila Prabhupada's vision was different. You know, he was seeing spirit. That's why, when, this is a very interesting thing. You know, once Srila Prabhupada was giving lecture in Mayapur. Uh, no. Yeah, Srila Prabhupada was giving lecture in Mayapur. Now, Mayapur, who knew at that time? How many of us knew about Mayapur before coming to ISKCON? And Srila Prabhupada is giving class there. And in his hut, there's a small cottage they have made. And this big temple has not, not come up. And Srila Prabhupada is so happy and he's saying, We are in this center of the universe. Most important place in creation, Mayapur. Lord Chaitanya came here. This is his vision. And same Srila Prabhupada, when he was giving lecture in Detroit once, Detroit is a well known American city. Srila Prabhupada begins his lecture by saying, So, we are in this remote corner of the world. <laughs> 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 so, 
So for Srila Prabhupada, America was a remote corner <laughs> and Mayapur was the place. So this is a pure devotee's vision. This is his compassion, his feeling. So he's going all the way to America because his Guru Maharaj wants Krishna consciousness to be spread in every town and village of this world. And there in Boston, at the sh- in the ship, he writes this beautiful bhajan where he is uh, revealing his heart to Krishna and he is expressing his disqualification and he tells Krishna in that bhajan Na chao na chao prabhu na chao se mate kaste rapu tali tata na chao se mate My dear Krishna make me dance I am a puppet in your hand you please make me dance and let me give Krishna consciousness to them I, I have no idea I have no, I have no devotion I don't know what is bhakti bhakti nai veda nai nama daro Bhakti Vedanta Nama Ebe Sartaka Koro I don't know what is Bhakti I don't know what is Vedanta But I've got the name Bhakti Vedanta If you want you can make this name be uh, Fulfilled The mission of this name will be fulfilled And he ends this poem by writing a sentence Signed Most unfortunate and insignificant beggar He calls himself as Most unfortunate and insignificant beggar in this poem. Look at his humility. Now in the previous, I just described a few minutes before how he was intensely remembering Krishna, Vrindavan, Chaitanya Charitamrita throughout the journey. If somebody who is always remembering Krishna and especially the intimate relationship with Krishna can call himself as insignificant, we hardly remember Krishna and we think we are so important. So, Srila Prabhupada has revealed his heart to his friend and companion Krishna and now this friend and companion is taken over. Srila Prabhupada's preaching in America. So he enters New York Harbor. Now he doesn't know where to enter. Now the ship has come finally to America. He comes out of the ship, of the, out of the harbor. Now he doesn't know whether to turn right or left. That also he doesn't know. And one gentleman is there from a travel company who is supposed to take Srila Prabhupada from the port, from the harbor to the bus. And Srila Prabhupada will now be going to Butler, Pennsylvania, where his host, Gopal Agarwal, is going to host Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada has a three month visa to America. So three months who is going to be his host? With whom is he going to stay? Gopal Agarwal. Now this is a very interesting uh, uh, part of the pastime of Srila Prabhupada. Who is this Gopal Agarwal? He has no idea who is Srila Prabhupada. But Srila Prabhupada is going to his house because when Srila Prabhupada was in India, he was he met one Mathura businessman and he told him his plans of going abroad. So this Mr. Agarwal was a businessman. He said, my son is in America and he can help you to go to, you know, he can give you papers and all that. He can accommodate you and all that. So no objection certificate. He can give you all those legal things. He can help you. And this pious man, Mr. Agarwal, he would tell many sadhus, he would try to help many sadhus go to America and all that. But nobody actually went. It's not so easy at that time. Like now also it's not so easy to go to America. So so they couldn't, uh, nobody actually took advantage of that facility. But Srila Prabhupada grabbed that offer and immediately worked on the papers. He got everything done and he wrote a letter to, because this businessman gave the address and details to Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada wrote to Gopal Agarwal saying, I am coming. And now Gopal Agarwal was shocked. You know, he had sent those papers of sponsor papers to many people, many sadhus. But here was one sadhu who actually was coming and this was none of his doing. He never expected some Swamiji will come to his house. And Prabhupada not only sent a letter saying, I am coming, he also sent his photo so that you can recognize me when I come. (laughs) (laughs) I am, you know, like this. So he was shocked and he didn't know what to do. You know, now he's coming. So he told his wife, he had an American wife. Gopal Agarwal had gone to America to study engineering and he got a job there and he he got married to an American lady. And they had one daughter, Pamela, who was around four, three, four years old. And they had just got another child, Braj. So second child was born. So they had two children. So they were staying in Butler, Pennsylvania, which was a small town and Gopal was the only Indian in that town. And suddenly this old Swamiji from India is coming to this town. So Gopal didn't know what to do. So they sent this uh, travel aid person. So this person made Srila Prabhupada sit in the bus. Now this bus was taking Prabhupada from New York to Butler. So so it was early morning, around 4.35, for the bus leaves and as the bus goes to the tunnel comes out in broad daylight Srila Prabhupada as first and experience of America he sees huge buildings he sees huge 
auto industries this is huge trucks this is a, a four lane traffic which has never seen in india where cars and vehicles are driving at 120 km per hour the razzle dazzle and the speed and passion of america is in all its grandeur in full form he is able to see everything from that bus because shila prabhupa that never seen such huge steel towers never witnessed anything of such magnitude as he is now seeing on his journey from new york to butler shila prabhupa was earlier if you see he is now coming from he is seeing all this why 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 we have to why we are describing this because we have to understand the background shila prabhupa was seeing vrindavan he was in vrindavan walking on the road telling everyone radhe radhe even now if you go to vrindavan you know people greet each other radhe radhe and it's such a beautiful place and now he is coming to crazy crazy america for him for that background you have to understand so now he is understanding yes he is now being welcome to the land of ignorance and passion so he is entering and now actually this bus ride this whole thing is so crazy if you see in one sense because shri prabhupad earlier would be in vrindavan traveling in ox cart sometimes walking once shri prabhupad was in vrindavan before going to america he was in an ox bullock cart going from one place to another place the bullock cart fell <laughs> prabhupad got up again sat and again went <laughs> simple you know vrindavan life is very simple <laughs> here vehicles are going at 120 km per hour full speed and so much and everywhere huge boards uh, signs were there of advertising liquor and meat and shila prabhupad looks at all this and thinks he has come to teach exactly the opposite of this culture and shila prabhupad felt compassion he is compassion is like the compassion of shri prahlad maharaj in the bhagavatam prahlad maharaj says to lord narasimha dev that there are many saintly people who are not interested in cities they go to the forest but my dear lord i want to be here to bring back all these foolish people hmm? so shila prabhupad was not staying in uh, some forest some himalayas he could have stayed in vrindavan as a baba ji he was already well known in radha damodar temple already he had, he had arranged janmashtami programs where the governor of uttar pradesh had come he had already made good contacts with the indian prime minister lal bahadur shastri he had met dr radha krishnan he was well known to many people and in vrindavan also he was known as a respectable baba ji who was an author of many books he was he was already he was already getting a reputation as an author this was the condition in which shila prabhupad left the comfort of vrindavan he could have been in his comfort zone but he left all that and is coming to gopal agarwal small place in butler pennsylvania and gopal and his wife are embarrassed they don't know how to handle this swami ji so they don't accommodate shila prabhupad in their own house there is ymca building there they make some arrangement because now they are facing a real problem you know the real problem was, see the problem was not that the, what they told shila prabhupad you stay here in ymca building because our house is small there's a problem you know you will not be able to stay actually that was not the problem the real problem was shila prabhupad for them because they didn't know how to explain him to their friends because they had nice social circuit there and they had so what to do you know how do we explain him so sally sally agarwal was the wife of gopal she was little proactive smart so she put an advertisement in the newspaper in butler big pehle se bata diya taki so that you know people don't get bewildered when they see ambassador of bhakti yoga she put that she gave that uh, news so that our friends know that in gopal and sally's house this person is staying and then Go- sally agarwal she recollects later that Hmm. she the propa she found propa as a very amazing person she thought he has not come to make any waves he has just come to finance some of his books that was the impression they had he has not come to do anything sensational in america he just come finance some books and they were impressed with shila propa he was very social he would talk to people next time when they would come sally and gopal's friends he would remember their names oh mr james how are you and that person would be impressed <laughs> this indian swami ji knows uh, knows us propad was very very expert and she says sally agarwal says shila propad was the easiest guest i ever had in my life because he would be chanting very peacefully happy and he would be cooking prasad and he would feed everyone and sally agarwal got attached to him and propad would open the refrigerator to take vegetables and he would keep his own vegetables there but he would see there was meat also kept sally and gopal actually gopal was from a very pious mathura family but now in association with his wife sally <laughs> there was 
that was neat and and sally agarwal she knew she treated prabhupad she knew she saw prabhupad and she saw he is like my father in law she considered him just like her husband's father so she knew that oh he doesn't like you know they don't eat meat all that she knew so she would she would be apologetic when she would see that prabhupad has opened the fridge and is seeing meat and prabhupad would say don't think no no problem you know don't think of it and prabhupad would be very comfortable and sometimes and she was careful not to smoke in front of prabhupad because she knew she is not supposed to smoke in front of her father in law so she knew some indian culture her husband had told her so she was careful about that my shila prabhupad showed lot of curiosity about the american culture he would ask her what is this vacuum cleaner he had never seen and he was very impressed by the laundromat they had there in the supermarket he had never seen supermarket so he would ask questions and he would enquire you know and he would learn the american ways of living so sally found him very a lively person he is not that is an old uh, you know person who had no interest no he was very sharp shila prabhupad was observing everything and during this time pamela gopal and sally's daughter she had just started going to nursery school so in the school they had started teaching her about jesus christ so when she came back she looked at prabhupada and she immediately said swami jesus <laughs> so for the for the next whatever time shila prabhupada stayed there every every time this girl small child she would look at prabhupada and always call him as swami jesus so like this shila prabhupada stayed in this uh, uh, the comfort of uh, a small butler town butler pennsylvania for one month so now three month visa he had one month is over and shila prabhupa says i'm leaving and i'm going to new york so both gopal and sally are shocked now shila prabhupa is leaving as a sanyasi he had no remorse about leaving the comfort of a nice family he could have stayed there for another two months and enjoyed america <laughs> you know although he inquired so much about the american culture he was not attached he was living why he came here why is now going to new york he saw himself simply as an instrument in the hands of krishna and he had inquired about american life he had some social circuit there he met met people made friends but he was not attached has left everything and and when he left sally was sally and gopal actually became emotional they had actually were attached to shila prabhupada in this one month because shila prabhupada not only was a wonderful guest and wonderful he charmed their hearts he would also cook prasad for them every day because they were eating meat shila prabhupada that is he was a great cook so he would cook nice prasad and give them and they would they would be very uh, nourished by that prasad so then gopal said how are you going to new york uh, where will you stay so shila prabhupada said i have one contact in new york now in india when shila prabhupada was there one sanyasi gave him one contact shila prabhupada said i may be going to america if it's okay i have one friend in new york so similarly shila prabhupada said who give him the contacts <laughs> so he took the contacts details and he kept it with him and now gopal agarwal is telling gopal agarwal i'm going to new york because i have one contact dr ram murthy mishra i'll go and stay with him look at prabhupada's courage and <laughs> going to a strange country just some remote not even his contact actually it is never met him never spoke to him so shila prabhupada takes a bus and from butler he goes to new york and stays with dr ram murthy mishra who is a completely opposite person to shila prabhupada <laughs> philosophically he is a mayavadi prabhupada is a bhakti yoga teacher he is a mayavadi and personality is a very dramatic person dr mishra was a doctor by uh, qualification but he was a yoga teacher and very dramatic and a showy personality you know he would speak about yoga and everything in you know, a coat tie and he would use very euphemistic words he would say lovely beautiful wonderful and he would be very he would do interactive sessions and things like that he would be very charming young person so anshila prabhupada the traditional you know in saffron robes sadhu <laughs> chanting hari krishna but shila prabhupada knocks him down with his love cooks prasad for him that time dr mishra was going through bad health shila prabhupada stayed with them and cooked nice prasad for him and revived his health but dr mishra realized this person is a threat because he was also preaching yoga he also had disciples and followers so one surprise he told prabhupada to speak and prabhupada spoke krishna consciousness so he after that dr ramurthy mishra would not allow prabhupada to speak 
So he would give class to his disciples and followers and then in the end he would say, Swamiji, 10 minutes is left, you can do some Kirtan. So he allowed uh, Prabhupada to do only Kirtan. So Srila Prabhupada would keep quiet because he is a guest there. And Dr. Mishra would give class and while giving class, Prabhupada would sit in the end, last row. And those people who are spaced out there, they would be also back. So he would talk to them, he would tell them, actually this is bogus, Krishna consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna is the supreme personality of God. It. So, and they would be, and they would get convinced and they would get attracted. Yeah, God is a person. How can absolute truth be impersonal, formless? Prabhupada would preach to those people. And then in the end, he would do Kirtan for a few minutes. Because once Dr. Mishra told him, Swamiji, five minutes is there. You can please speak. So Prabhupada spoke for one hour. <laughs> he glorified Krishna. So then they would go in the car to different places. So they would argue philosophically. They would, they would argue like anything. Sometimes they would be shouting. But after some time they would again be friends. Because see, this is, a, this is the beauty of Vedic culture in India. Sometimes people think, oh, Iskon philosophy is so different. We should know. The beauty of Vedic culture is, philosophically we may have differences with so many sampradayas. But culturally we are united. If you see, Vedic culture is wonderful. So this philosophical difference is only, is, is, is a strength of our Vedic culture actually. So Srila Prabhupada had those differences, but they were very good friends. In fact, they were so close friends, Srila Prabhupada would ask him openly, Dr. Mishra, you should please help me in my preaching mission. I want to spread the mission of Lord Chaitanya. Please, you are a Sanskrit scholar, please edit my books. He would say, I am very busy, I have no time. Then Srila Prabhupada would say, see, you are Mishra, you should help me spread Lord Chaitanya's mission because Lord Chaitanya's father's name was Jagannath Mishra. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the same name, Mishra, so you are connected to Lord Chaitanya. So Dr. Ramurthy Mishra was also smart, you know, when Prabhupada gave this logic, he said, no, 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 you don't need my help, you are actually incarnation of Lord Chaitanya. So, <laughs> well, like that, they would, uh, <laughs> he would avoid helping uh, Srila Prabhupada. But actually, Dr. Mishra later on, after the, after Prabhupada left this world, he gave actually an interview and he regretted that he couldn't help Srila Prabhupada. He said, this is one of the things I regret, I should have helped, I should have gone out of my way. So, now, one more month goes like this with Dr. Mishra. Two months out of three months gone. Srila Prabhupada realizes his visa is getting over. Now what to do? He has come to America to spread Lord Chaitanya's mission. Now he starts writing desperate letters for help to India. Please help me. So he starts writing a lot of letters to Sumati Murarji. And she gets, he gets no reply from her. <coughs> in Butler, when he was at Butler, Sumati Muraji had written a letter to Prabhupada saying that, please do not return to India until you fulfill your mission. Whatever mission you have, you fulfill it and then come. She had expressed a lot of best wishes. So, Srila Prabhupada reminds her of her letter and he says, yes, my mission is we want to build the biggest Hindu temple. We want to build a big temple in New York glorifying your Lord Bal Krishna and you will get the glory of being the first Indian to build this temple. So you are a pious Gujarati lady, please help. Let us make a big temple for Krishna in New York. She, he gets no reply from her. And then he writes letter to his god brother Tirtha Maharaj, who is the president of Gaudiya Math. He says, I cannot help you. Then he meets Ramakrishna mission people in New York and their leader, Swami Nikhilananda, and understands Indian culture. The, 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 the the response to Indian culture in America. They tries to understand that. And Nikilananda says, if you want to preach and give your message, you have to be like me. You have to be in pant shirt, coat tie, and you have to adopt American ways. You have to eat with spoon and fork. Prabhupada dismissed all of that. He was not going to compromise the American ways. So then, he writes a letter to Tirith Maharaj saying, if you want, I am going to stay in America and uh, extend my visa. Otherwise, I am returning back to India very soon. He writes three letters to Tirth Maharaj and he doesn't get any encouragement. Des these, are, these are desperate letters for help. And during this uncertain period, you know what Srila Prabhupada does? He goes on looking for buildings where a big temple can be made. <laughs> <laughs> so he meets one met, uh, Mr. Hartman who offers him a place at $10,000 per month rent. Prabhupada says this is too small. Finally, they find a big place with $20,000 down payment you make and then you get that place. 
and Srila Prabhupada writes about this building to all his friends in India. Please help, we will buy this building. And then in one letter to his, one of his friends he writes, I am not getting any encouragement from anyone. But I am not the one to be disappointed. This is a very powerful letter. I am not the one to be disappointed. So finally after repeated letters to Sumati Murarji, one letter he writes to her point blank. He says, please help me, I want to start a temple in America. And finally he starts, now the third month is also coming to an end. Three month visa is coming to an end. Just when it is ending, he extends his visa. His visa was from uh, till November. Hmm? September, October and November. Now he extends it to February, December to February. Three more months. So this is the period when no help alone in America and December, Jan, Feb is the worst winter of New York. And this year particularly when Srila Prabhupada went in 65, it was one of the worst winters and every night Srila Prabhupada would be hearing sirens, police uh, vehicles sound. And Prabhupada would say, my heart would crack hearing that noise and shouting and screaming in the night, all these people. And he said New York would smell, horrible smell in the New York City. He said it smelt like dog stool, the whole city. And it was minus 15, minus 20 degrees Celsius. So cold. And such uncertain period, no help. And he goes to a New York park in the daytime and he's sitting there. So one conductor, one of uh, the tram, New York tram conductor, doc, Mr. Ruben is also sitting there. And he wonders who is this old, uh, curious looking, you know, strange looking person. He understands he's some monk in saffron robes. He asks him, who are you? And you know, what are you doing here in this New York? Uh, he was a subway conductor and he sees an old Swami in a park, probably sitting alone chanting. Prabhupada tells him about himself and he says, we have many temples all over the world. We have many books. We have many people chanting Hare Krishna. So Ruben is wondering, but he looks lonely, he looks alone, he has, you know. And Srila Prabhupada says, time is separating us. And he kept saying we because Munindan Maharaj once gave a nice purport. Prabhupada would always say we. Even in his purports, he wouldn't say I. He would always say, we are going here, we have written so many books. Because Prabhupada is always conscious that he is not alone. He is, the whole parampara is within. He was very conscious of his spiritual master. Therefore, he would always write we. So, to, to, to Mr. Rubin also he kept saying, we have many temples, we are we. You know, he was a we person, not I. I language is bad language. We language is a teamwork, no? like that. So, we. so Prabhupada is remembering the whole parampara's mercy and that way he tells... Um, so, that time during this period, look at Prabhupada, no encouragement, no support and this Dr. Mishra is also not encouraging him. So, he is alone and the only happiness, you know, he was getting was he would go to this New York Central Library because in India he had given Bhagavatam sets to the American Embassy and they had transferred these books to New York Central Library. So in their catalog you would go and see, oh my books are here, Bhagavatam is here and some people have sometimes issued it. <laughs> so he feels happy, oh that is demand for Krishna consciousness in America, <laughs> that is demand. <laughs> you would see hope from that. And there was one uh, bookshop where his Bhagavatam was kept and nobody was buying those books. But that lady who was that shop, Prabhupada would go and meet her every few days. How are you? How are my books going? And she would say, nobody is buying. And while talking, she mentioned about Indian culture and how she likes samosas. So next day, Prabhupada cooked nice samosas for her and what? <laughs> she was very touched. Srila Prabhupada was very sensitive, understanding. And despite no encouragement from India, he kept seeing different, different buildings for a big temple. So then, that this Mr. Hartman, he had told him, $27 down payment, I will arrange. You just, you keep that building for me. You know, I am getting the money very soon. But during this time, Lal Bahadur Shastri dies in India, during Jan, Feb, 1966 time. So then Srila Prabhupada talks to Hartman and says, see, I was hoping that Lal Bahadur Shastri Prime Minister will help. Because I was writing letters to him, I was in the process of writing a letter to him, asking for money. Now he has died, so now I cannot arrange this money. And anyway, you see, your building nobody is using. So, you give it to me and you can save taxes also and you become the president of our society. <laughs> but give me this building. You want to start Krishna consciousness here. And of course, he refused because he, <laughs> he couldn't. He was demanding $21 and Srila Prabhupada was so desperate to preach in New York that he wanted that building free at that point of time. So Finally, he said, now I want this building. So, you know what he did? He wrote a letter to Padampad Singhania, the very famous industrialist owner of the JK company. And he 
Pajampat Singhani has showed interest. So now they started corresponding letters, desperate letters Shila Prabhupada is writing. So Pajampat Singhani says, yes, this is a nice place, you take it, uh, but there are two problems I am having in helping you. One is the foreign exchange. That time foreign exchange controls are very rigid. He said, how are we going to arrange transfer of so much money for building a temple? And secondly, this temple which you are going to have, Krishna temple in New York, should be Indian architecture. Exclusively it should be Indian architecture. Srila Prabhupada said, no, no, let us first buy the house. You know, and then let us put a dome on top. In that letters he is writing like that. Let us put a dome and let us first become a temple and then future we can do that. But he says, no, no, no. Even in the, right in the beginning we should have an Indian architecture. That, this was the details they were having discussion on. So Srila Prabhupada resolved this confusion with a very beautiful letter. He writes to him, Mr. Singhanya Ji, you have so much love for Krishna that you want to have a grand Indian architecture style temple for Krishna. This is the mood of Dwarka. Whereas I am from Vrindavan, it will spontaneous. We want to just start Krishna worship first. So you are Dwarka Wala, I am Vrindavan Wala. <laughs> so let us, let us cooperate. Let Dwarka Wala and Vrindavan Wala cooperate so that Krishna worship goes on in a wonderful way. But Adhampa Singhan is not interested. He is very rigid because he wants, because full Indian architecture style means so many laborers will be needed. You know, so much of money will be needed. But Srila Prabhupada was wanting a very, to begin with, less hassles, you know, let us get the place first. So, it's not possible, Pandapan Singhanya stop, stops corresponding with Srila Prabhupada, although Srila Prabhupada very sweetly tells him, let us, you know, let us get the place first. But then Prabhupada tells him, okay, we'll follow your mood, you know, architecture style. Please send some people then to help me build this temple. You know, you need people. Prabhupada doesn't have people there. So then now, Pandapan Singhanya is not able to arrange people to come and help him. So he starts talking to, uh, the president of India, Dr. Radha Krishna, he writes letters to him. And finally, he writes one letter to his god brother, Thirith Maharaj, and says, Please know that I am not, I have not come to America for sightseeing. I have come here simply to fulfill the order of my spiritual master. So, there is complete discouragement from all quarters. Finally, in Mumbai, he had put his books in Universal Book House. Srila Prabhupada has was staying here near Grant Road for a long time, near uh, near uh, Nana Chowk, you know, near there was a Gaudiya Mutt there. Prabhupada would stay there for a long time. He was also staying at Gwalior Tank for a long time. He would go to Jain College. He would give books there. These books are at Universal Book House also. So this book house person wrote letter to Prabhupada saying that none of your books are going. We are not. Uh, only six books have been sold in the last so many months. So you are not going to keep. Finally, desperately, Srila Prabhupada wrote one letter to Indira Gandhi, who was the new Prime Minister of India, telling her all his plans for spreading Krishna consciousness. And she was also, she also corresponded. She wrote a letter back to him saying, it will not be possible to help you. Then, Srila Prabhupada write, wrote a letter to one of his friends saying that, I am counting days, uh, I am waiting every day for at least one favorable reply from at least one person from India. And then to Sumati Muraji writes a final letter saying, in this old age, when I am about to die, I have not come to America for sightseeing. Please help me. And then to Sumati Muraji says, even if you can't help me, please know that Krishna consciousness will spread in America. And we are going to have a big temple in America. We are going to have many followers. We are going to have many Americans who will become devotees. And when they become devotees, I request you, Sumati Murarji, please allow them free passage on your India steamship company. Let them come to India for darshan of all the temples in Vrindavan. <laughs> so, Srila Prabhupada was convinced of future success. Look at his positive attitude. It's, this is amazing. It's, it's mind-blowing actually. How can somebody be so positive and confident with so much of heart attack, health failing, no support, So, no reply and even Padampa Singhana secretary replies by saying, we are not interested in this preaching and this temple building in New York. So, one may think, oh, all this is a failure and all this is a setback. Srila Prabhupada says, actually, actually, no, it was a success. Why? Srila Prabhupada says, during that period, in one conversation he says, I was living in New York with complete uncertainty, but I was not in New York, Manhattan. I was not in Manhattan consciousness, I was in Vrindavan consciousness. 
because Srila Prabhupada says I was doing three things every day. I was reading Chaitanya Charitamrit and writing Srimad Bhagavatam every day. Secondly, I was offering cooking and offering food to Krishna and taking prasad. And thirdly, I was speaking on Bhagavad Gita to whomever I met. So I was remembering Krishna. Although no one in New York City took him seriously, he was feeling complete happiness because he was remembering Krishna. So we may go through our ups and downs in life. Material energy is not going to support all our plans. So we may feel very uh, despondent. We should know if we remember Krishna, we can always be happy. Now look at the situation Srila Prabhupada is in. Such uncertainty, no help, no support. He tells Dr. Mishra, I am leaving you. I am going to take another room, room number 302 on rent. I am going to stay there. And they are charging $72 rent. And Dr. Mishra says, but you have nothing, no support, no money. How will you pay $72 every month and stay in this uh, room? He says, I'll, I'll sell my books and I'll take this one place. Why, why Prabhupada left Dr. Mishra and took, his, took a place on rent? Because he wanted a, his own place where he could preach. Now he has no guaranteed income and minus 25 degrees Celsius, very cold, physically uncomfortable and he takes this place because he was now free to preach. Now he had no constraints of Dr. Mishra or the middle class sensibilities of Butler, Pennsylvania, Gopal Agarwal's place, New York no problem. Because he didn't want to just give one time lecture, he wanted a place where people can regularly come every day and he can cultivate them. So he took this place, $72 rent, and was this place good? It was not at all. It was so bad, such a horrible place, dirty place, that even those of spiritual inclined would not come there. Prabhupada said it was like a train cabin. It, had, it was rugless, dirty, and he began alone. How he began his preaching? He would keep his room open, and he would keep a tape recorder, start the recording, and then when the recording starts, he would sing bhajan, and give class, and speak on Bhagavad Gita. The introduction to Bhagavad Gita was also spoken in that. And who in the audience? Brahma, Narada, Shiva, all the demigods. <laughs> <laughs> they were the only audience. Because Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sathya Thakur had said, even if nobody is interested, preach to the four walls. So Srila Prabhupada was preaching to the four walls. And the first audience who came to his classes were the students of Dr. Mishra. You know, they would come. And if you hear those lectures, they are high-pitched, earnest, persuading, there's a lot of urgency in his tone. He's desperately talking about Krishna consciousness. Long lectures, one and a half, two hours, and very fast. He's speaking with a desperate appeal. And in the class, one man is reading newspaper. You know, Americans have no respect for, like, they, they don't know who is Prabhupada, who is he's a Bhagavad person, Bhagavad, he's written Bhagavatam. They have no idea about Bhagavatam and Vedic culture. So, Prabhupada is speaking, five, six people are there in class, and this man is reading his own book. This is not the kind of response you give to a Bhagavad speaker in India. So, Srila Prabhupada tells him, in the middle of the class, please hear me. No, that's an appeal. Please hear me. This man says, yeah, yeah, go on, I am listening. Uh, he doesn't care, you know. Srila Prabhupada is actually begging for attention. He was trying desperately to convince people of Krishna consciousness. So, he starts telling them about Krishna consciousness. He tells them about Indian culture. tells them about sacred thread, Brahman thread. So, for these people, no, they are very new and for them it's exotic Indian culture. He talks about Indian marriages. But a careful listener of these classes can grasp the greater context or the greater uh, the urgency in which Srila Prabhupada was speaking. He was speaking a heavy topic about spiritual master. He was speaking all these concepts because he wanted to give Krishna. He speaks, Shishya Steham Sadimam Tvam Prapannam and he saves that and he stops and he realizes nobody has ever heard Sanskrit word before. <laughs> And they are just looking at him blankly. They have no idea. And the old people have started coming. Some old people. So, and he tries to help them relate to Krishna consciousness. He says, material world is suffering. And he tells them, see for example, snow. So much snow. You are so inconvenienced. He gives examples from their day-to-day -day life, New York life, so that they can understand. And then, he says, um, so you please start process of chanting, Hare Krishna. You know Krishna? And then suddenly he realizes nobody has heard of Krishna. They have no idea what is Krishna. <laughs> and he just, he's shocked. He says, you don't know Krishna? Krishna? Now in India, even if you're not a Hindu, 
एवरी वन नोज कृष्ण फ्रॉम चाइल्ड वी हर्ड बट हियर आर पीपल हुआ नेवर हर्ड द वर्ल्ड कृष्ण एंड इज द फर्स्ट टाइम शिला प्रपाद इज टेलिंग देम यू नो कृष्ण यू हर सीन कृष्णा फोटो कृष्णा पिक्चर कृष्णा पेंटिंग एवरी वन दे आर लाइक दे हैव नो आइडिया and you can see propas voice fits and it's like what is he doing he is telling them about a personality these people can't just relate and then people are uh, just listening and then he says vrindavan is a very sacred place so one lady one old lady sitting oh yeah secret secret right propas is sacred <laughs> secret lot of magnetic energy is there in secret places so she is talking all vague you know they, they have no idea about what is dham prabodh is trying to give prabodh is trying to give them dham the holy place of vrindavan finally in the middle of the class shila prabodh says my heart is not here so that so people in the class they start laughing shila prabodh says i am not happy here and the woman says yeah i know uh, one one note is yeah i know shila prabodh says i will be very happy if i return to my vrindavan but i will not go back to vrindavan i'll stay here <laughs> i'll preach krishna consciousness so shila prabha said i have lot of difficulties here but my guru maharaj has ordered me so this is duty hmm? vrindavan and prabha said vrindavan will be very good for my personal convenience very comfortable i have no anxiety in vrindavan but i am taking this risk because i am duty bound to serve my guru so in this whole crowd elderly spaced out crowd one boy comes robert nelson and he is uh, he is not something he is not somebody who want, he, he wants to help propas but he is very dull he is a country boy he is a loner unemployed he has no money he can't give any of the four you know in in uh, chetana mapro said give praner arter dhiya vacha give your life to krishna if you can't give give money to krishna or give at least speak about krishna like that you know he couldn't do any of these things he was dull he couldn't get no money he couldn't speak properly but shila prabhupa so he is interested and prabhupa gave the whole krishna consciousness to him every day prabhupa would cook for him you know they would sleep together and prabhupa as they would be sleeping prabhupa would speak whole gaur leela to him <laughs> and he would hear he was very positive he would keep telling prabhupa this swami ji i will do a record business i will earn billions of dollars and then i will give you prabhupa would say okay okay and you know <laughs> prabhupa would encourage him prabhupa a uh, propad is so smart propad has lived done business he, he knows this boy has no capacity <laughs> he can't do anything <laughs> but just because he has said i want to help and he is interested in krishna consciousness propad starts glorifying lord chaitanya so much to him so then he says swami i have seen some building we can buy come so they go so he starts showing you know this building is good so they say one one building which costs 1000 dollars rent propad says um, propad is paying 72 dollars now and this 1000 dollar rent building purpose is this is too small we need a bigger place <laughs> then they see a place which has 5000 dollars rent that also is not much then they see a 10000 dollar building finally propas says i think uh, you know we should uh, buy a big building so so this boy robert mentioned i i saw a nice building so he takes him to hotel columbia suit so we have a huge place propas says ha this is a nice place we can have brahmachari ashram upstairs we can have <laughs> temple <laughs> only here <laughs> So, Pr- Prabhupada is giving all his plans how they are going to have Krishna consciousness here. So both, so this boy has no idea, but look at the super confidence he has, and Prabhupada is encouraging. <laughs> Prabhupada is supremely confident because of his confidence in Krishna. This boy is su- confident because he is spaced out. He has no idea. <laughs> he has no idea what he is saying. Prabhupada is complete on a transcendental platform, but he is accommodating him, giving him Krishna consciousness. So like this. for some time he keeps coming then another boy comes harvey kohan then bill epstein he was working in a paradox restaurant so he would come every day and he got attracted to swami ji what he would do he thought you know when you like someone you should give them something so he would get food from his hotel now you can imagine what new york <laughs> restaurant what they must be cooking but he would get nice food according to him what is nice and he would pack it up and he would get for proper then proper couldn't proper didn't say you know hotel khana and horrible and New York, क्या क्या रहेगा उसमें वॉट ऑल विद प्रोपर वुड हैप्पीली थैंक यू वुड से थैंक यू एंड वुड एक्सेप्ट दैट एंड बिल एफ स्टेन लेटर सेज ऑलवेज ही एक्सेप्टेड बट ऑफकोर्स आई नेवर सो आई मीटिंग वॉट आई गेव हिम यू वुड एक्सेप्ट एंड आई डोट नो वॉट वी डोट नो वॉट प्रोपर बट प्रोपर एनकरेज हिम टू कम फॉर द प्रोग्राम बाई जस्ट एक्सेप्टिंग वॉट एवरी गेव सो नाउ प्रोपर वॉज हैप्पी बिकॉज दिस वॉज अ कॉन्ट्रास्ट टू द अर्लियर क्राउड 
earlier old people were coming now younger people are coming so then this boy start telling him swami ji you know you are staying in this room it's such a horrible place why don't you come to bauri our place you know <laughs> they were staying on the lower east side and it was like actually worse than where proper the staying shila proper says yeah he is waiting for krishna to reveal to him what to do should he go to that new place or not during this period his room at room number 302 where he was staying gets burglarized his tape recorder is stolen and then he realizes this is krishna indicating that i should go to a new place so he starts listening to this voice and goes to bauri now this was the most illogical thing to do materially because bauri was 100 times worse than this new place because the owner of this place was giving this room to prabhupad now he was giving it because that place was so bad and he was so miserable living there that he was living not only that place and town he was living the city he was going to san francisco that man was so horrified by staying staying in bauri so he is giving this place to prabhupad to stay so it's like from frying pan to fire you know from a bad place prabhupad is coming to a worse place like if somebody says you know from village amara gaon somebody is in village like nanded or jalgaon and if he says this village is very passionate you know let me go to mumbai mumbai is more peaceful <laughs> <laughs> if somebody says like that you will think uh, crazy so prabhupada is going to the most degraded place but he is in this consciousness nachao nachao prabhu kastera putali nachao i am a puppet so he wants to spread krishna consciousness he comes to bauri which has nash which the average murder rate there was five times greater than the national average of america people are living in the gutters there and this room prabhupada got in bauri on the fourth floor of a building and 10000 bums would be there on the streets every day in bauri they would be urinating and squatting on the street gutters living there sleeping there but when our papa would come they would become grave and they would respect him <laughs> and they would allow him to walk and they had some papa that that uh, papa attracted that commanded that respect so there now this is the best thing i liked you know when i was reading this shila papa that let write a letter to his friend from bauri he describes the whole thing how bauri is and then he says but every, everywhere is my home he says everywhere is my home because i am remembering krishna here see without krishna shelter and remembrance of krishna you may be in the best temple but you, that could be a most desolate place for you but shila prabhupada remembering krishna so a bauri he was finding like vrindavan and prabhupada that the potency to convert this place into a uh, spiritual place bhavad vida bhagavati tirtha bhuta swayam vibho tirti kurvanti tirtani svantastena gadavrata yudhishthir maharaj says that a pure devotee person bhagavat is a holy place bhavad vida bhagavati tirtha bhuta swayam vibho a pure devotee is tirtha place you may think place is a land how can a person be place holy place he says tirti kurvanti tirtani because a holy person a pure devotee has the ability to convert an ordinary place into a place of pilgrimage therefore a pure devotee is place of pilgrimage because he can convert an ordinary place into a place of pilgrimage why he can convert an ordinary place into a place of pilgrimage swantastena gadabrata because in his heart is carrying krishna because in his heart there is krishna wherever he goes he makes that place into spiritual place that's why we see our devotees you know when they go to america they all go to new york and they take photo <laughs> of that place where propa stayed that tree where propa did kirtan and they get it back it's like for them it's like going to holy place there are devotees from india who when they go to america new york they go there and i remember first time gorang group and going through went you know they took photo under that tree where propa did kirtan and they bought it so so propa made new york into a place of pilgrimage hmm. so here when propa is staying so Do- robert nelson remember i spoke about him very dull boy he stops coming to program very dull very he was like you know uh, very uh, lazy kind of person he couldn't do anything he stops coming but who starts coming david allen he was crazy he was other extreme he was wild and but propad gives him also krishna consciousness and then many other boys start coming one day david allen he used to take lot of drugs propad would tell him stop this stop this but he would not listen but he was interested in krishna consciousness also one day he goes mad he attacks propad in the room 
So Prabhupada's life is in danger. Prabhupada immediately climbs the four stories down. He comes down. He's on the street. And David Allen is screaming, yelling, throwing things in the room. He goes mad. Actually mad. And Prabhupada is on the street of New York. And suddenly he realizes, I have nothing. I am alone now. Who am I? <laughs> nothing he has. He has nothing in New York. No place, no people. And then he looks at the Bauris. At least they have some place to stay. They, they have some. They, they belong to New York. Prabhupada has nothing in New York. He is on the street. So, but he is seeing Krishna. So he knows that one boy was coming, Michael Grant. He is now today Mukunda Maharaj. Hmm. So he, Michael Grant, Prabhupada goes to him and he and his other friends, they arrange accommodation, temporary accommodation for Prabhupada in one person's house, Carl and his girlfriend Eva. So he stays, Prabhupada stays in them, in the small, they have a small room where the television is on 24 hours, where she has cats and dogs as pets and all, the, the whole room is completely dirty. They have not taken bath for weeks, the clothes are not washed. In that small room, they accommodate Prabhupada and Eva is afraid because she feels this Swamiji will take away my boyfriend. Huh? And uh, she was a strong feminist. She was aware of Prabhupada as an orthodox traditional person. So she didn't want, she was not happy with this old man staying with two of them. <laughs> this is the condition in which Prabhupada was living. And there was no way of going back to, uh, going back to that room because David Allen was going crazy. So finally, Prabhupada leaves Carl um, and Eva's place also. So look, look at the places he's changing. First, Butler, Pennsylvania. Then, Dr. Mishra's yoga studio. Then, room number 302. Then, Bowery. Then, Carl and Eva. Then, Michael Grant and others tell him, please come to 26 Second Avenue. That is the sixth place where Srila Prabhupada takes New York. Sixth place he goes after coming to America. And in those classes he starts speaking about dovetailing your consciousness in service of Krishna. Now this consciousness word was very popular during that time in America amongst hippies because they used to always talk about cosmic consciousness. You know, these words are very popular or uh, altering the state of consciousness. And Prabhupada was talking about dovetailing your consciousness. So this was like cool for them. Oh, this, they, they, this made sense to them. And Prabhupada would speak. And they realized, all these hippies, they were realizing that Srila Prabhupada is the only one who actually loved them. Most of these hippies were rejected by the American society. And here, Prabhupada would chant Hare Krishna in this 26 Second Avenue place which he got. And people would come, Howard, Keith, Wally, Chuck, Steve, Bruce. They all eventually became, Bruce became Brahmananda, Chuck Achyutananda, Greg Gargamuni. Howard became Hayagriva, Steve, Satsarup, Wally became Umapati. So they all started coming one by one. So one Prabhupada was walking on the road in 26 seconds. He put up a board outside his room saying, Bhagavad Gita classes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So Steve was working in a social welfare office and he was he saw that and he became attracted and he started coming. And once Prabhupada was walking on the street, Howard was an English professor, scholar. He was walking on the street and he had recently come back from India. And he looked at Swamiji and he said, Oh, you are from India? Prabhupada said, yes, and are you also from India? He said, no, I am from America. And Prabhupada said, I have these classes going on here, why don't you come, get your friends also. So Howard went and told his friends, Wally and Chuck, and they agreed, so they started coming. So suddenly, in 26 Second Avenue, all these young boys started coming, and Prabhupada would do Kirtan. Now, they didn't know what is holy name, they didn't know holy name is not different from Krishna. They came for this program with psychedelic ambitions, with ambitions of seeing some light coming out from somewhere, with some suddenly flying in the air. These are the kind of idea they had about spiritual life. That it will happen suddenly. You know, this was the, this was the kind of consciousness they had. And here Prabhupada is tell, telling them about Hare Krishna. And they, had, they didn't have proper discipline or reverence or respect for a sadhu. And Srila Prabhupada does his classes. And during this time, Prabhupada is intense. He would sleep hardly 3-4 hours of rest he would take. And whole day he would be preaching, preaching, talking to people. Sometimes you talk while giving class and talking, answering questions. You would, you know, that was his rest. You would just take rest. You had no time to take rest also. Cooking. You would cook a feast every day for all these boys who would come. Pick feast. 
serve them, they would take food and they would go back and then Papa would clean the whole place. Every day he was doing this. So one person asked uh, during that time, Swamiji, how is your health? You are 71 years old. Uh, how is your health? So, Prabhupada was so blissful. You know, he was eating nice prasad that time. He was healthy. Prabhupada just took his hand, palm and tapped it on his stomach. And he said, ah, see, nice sound is coming. <laughs> so he said, yeah, I am healthy. You know. <laughs> so he was, very, uh, he was very enthusiastic. And that time, um, he would uh, chant Hare Krishna and he would tell them. So people would look at him and they, some people started calling him as Swami Buddha. They found him very regal, royal. And uh, during that, when he, when he was staying at Bauri, there was a sniper who would stay in his room and shoot at people. Kabir Dimak, you know, anything he goes, he just goes crazy, he just starts shooting anyone. So, crazy people are staying there. So, when he came to 26nd Avenue, one of these boys asked, Swamiji, how could you stay in Bauri? Bauri is the worst place in America. And that sniper, were you not afraid of those crazy bums and those crazy people? Papa said, no, I am not afraid. I am Calcutta man. I grew up in Calcutta. I am very tough. Nothing can scare me. So, then like this, Shila Papa stayed there. So, a lot of pastimes took place in New York. We don't have so much time. So, we would uh, conclude by discussing how Srila Prabhupada uh, established, this is how he entered New York and this is how he established ISKCON in these circumstances. And the initiation took place. There are so many pastimes. Once, you know, they were doing uh, Kirtan. So, Bruce came and said, we'll have a record. We'll do our recording. So, they went to a recording studio. So, there... The whole night went in recording till 11, 11.30. For this studio engineer was asking Prabhupada again and again, are you tired? Are you tired? Do you need rest? No, no, no. Let us chant the holy name. So they chanted the holy name. They did the recording. Finally, when that recording was played, spontaneously Prabhupada got up and started dancing. He was so attracted to the holy name. And then that night when Prabhupada took rest, he had chest pain and devotees thought that his health is deteriorating. And morning everybody was tense. Prabhupada's health is very bad. So when Prabhupada came for lunch prasad, he was taking prasad, Devotees are thinking, who will ask Prabhupada about his health? And before they could ask, Srila Prabhupada said, Why only New York? We should spread Krishna consciousness in all over the world. So devotees are shocked that instead of thinking of his health, he, they were all thinking of his health. Because they were thinking he also must be quiet because he is in pain. But Prabhupada was quiet because he was meditating on how Krishna consciousness can spread in San Francisco, Montreal. So he sent... Uh, Mukunda, uh, now Michael Grant had become Mukunda, his wife Jan had become Janki. And then from San Francisco, they, they wrote a letter Swamiji, come here, we have arranged a rock concert for you. <laughs> and Shila Prabhupada said, yes, I am coming. So his New York disciples were wondering, you know, they thought Swamiji will never leave this New York. Swamiji was a small society, and Prabhupada established International Society for Krishna Consciousness in New York. People are wondering, what is this International Society? I was a small town, small city, and Prabhupada will be with us only. But Prabhupada was not attached to Butler, Pennsylvania or New York or Ramurthy Mishra. He was interested in spreading Krishna consciousness in every town and village of this world. So one fine day he said, I am going to, I'm going to San Francisco, which is on the other side of America from New York. Huh? Complete, West Coast, Pura. And he said, I am going. And devotees were shocked and he actually left. And he went to San Francisco and did mantra rock dance concert. <laughs> he went there and did Hare Krishna chanting. And he had taken two, three devotees with him, brahmacharis. And after the rock concert, he said, no, brahmacharis should come here. <laughs> so like that, he spread. And then the first Sankirtan which happened in New York is a very important incident. One day, this, this happened, the first Kirtan, public Kirtan of Hare Krishna was held in Washington Square Park in New York. It was a Sunday afternoon. Srila Prabhupada saw that these disciples were organizing lectures for Prabhupada in big, big halls and auditoriums and four or five people were coming. Prabhupada said, go to the park. Park is free of cost. <laughs> and chant Hare Krishna there. So one day he said, told his uh, students, Keith, Howard, today we will do Kirtan in the park. They were shocked because they had never done Kirtan outside that room. 26 2nd Avenue. In the park, uh, Swamiji, uh, nobody, nobody goes to park for, uh, we were chanting and dancing in the park. Now, nobody, no sadhu from India had ever gone to America, had never performed Sankirtan. Prabhupada said, don't worry, you will enjoy it. Come. They were very scared and Prabhupada was walking. 
and they all were very nervously following Srila Prabhupada. What is Prabhupada going to do today? Swamiji is going to do Kirtan in the park? Nobody has ever done it in the history of America. It's not, it's not, it doesn't happen in America like that. Prabhupada said, no, 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 don't, nothing will happen. They went. So he sat in the park and started playing Kartal and everybody is sitting and they are awkward. There is an awkwardness amongst all of them. Because nobody has done Kirtan. See, I don't know. First time when I came to Iskon also, I think most of us, you know, we have not heard of a spiritual path where there is dancing and chanting. And even if there is, we don't, we have not heard of chanting and dancing in the streets. In the name of spirituality, I remember the first Kirtan, you know, it was so awkward. Every Sunday after Sunday feast, there would be a Nagar Sankirtan that time. And it was so embarrassing and uncomfortable for me. You know, I would be going with people and they would be dancing on the road suddenly. <laughs> the Kirtan would go fast. So this, you know, I could appreciate what these boys were feeling with Prabhupada. They were feeling, how can we dance? Before coming to ISKCON, you know, the, I used to go to a spiritual organization where they used to tell us to talk to trees. So I used, to, I used to ask them, it's very embarrassing. They used to say, don't feel shy, just talk to trees. I used to talk to trees. And it was so embarrassing what people think. <laughs> so then after coming to Hare Krishna, we, we went on a Kirtan and I was, you know, after a few days I was dancing. So one devotee said, Hare, you are not feeling shy or something. You are, you know, you are just dancing. I said, you don't know what I was doing before coming. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to that, this is nothing. <laughs> So chanting and dancing is not something which we are now so accustomed to it. You know, we we enjoy it, but those boys were not feeling little awkward. And there, Prabhupada says, and they start the kirtan. The policemen come. Who is in charge here? And they all look at Prabhupada because Prabhupada is the one who told them to come to the park. <laughs> Prabhupada looks at him. You know, Prabhupada is very regal, grave. Yes, and the policeman says, you're not because there is a big board there which said, keep off the grass. You're not supposed to sit on the park like that. And the policeman tells Prabhupada, can't see that board? Prabhupada says, keep off the grass. So he gets up. So that park was like this. There was grass. Just outside the grass was the pavement. Prabhupada just comes out, just one step out and he sits on the pavement. And he starts Kirtan. <laughs> <laughs> now the policeman is bewildered. He can't do anything. So then Prabhupada starts Kirtan and all of them are looking at each other, nervous. And then slowly, slowly the Kirtan becomes fast. And then they all stand up, start dancing. So Prabhupada has broken the American silence. He has actually given the holy name and then it becomes a sensation. And after the Kirtan, as Prabhupada walks back to his storefront, lot of people follow and they all come to. That's how he attracted a lot of young boys and girls to Krishna consciousness. Like Pied Piper of Hamelin, we had a story in our school. You know, he would play his pipe and all these children came, the rats came, rats came, so like that. Prabhupada would do Kirtan and he would attract all these followers. And that's how Krishna consciousness spread in New York. And from New York, Prabhupada went to San Francisco. And from there, he trained his disciples. And that's how Krishna consciousness spread all over the world. So there's a lot of more pastimes we can discuss some other time. So on this most auspicious occasion when Srila Prabhupada entered America, we can offer sincere prayers of gratitude that through so much of sacrifice, so much of struggle, See, when that letters came of discouragement and no support, Prabhupada concluded that I am not going to get any help from India. He concluded. So he looked, so he was now focusing on the American youth. And all these boys, Howard, Keith, Mike, they took up one challenge after another. And then they went to Montreal, London, and they spread. So what these pious Martha Brahmins of India who are so called protectors of Vedic Dharma, what they could not do, Srila Prabhupada did with the help of all his western disciples. And what were these western disciples doing? They were spreading the culture of India. Hmm? The Vedic culture, the Krishna conscious culture. So like this, Krishna consciousness spread all over the world. But Srila Prabhupada never, uh, never um, lost confidence that Krishna consciousness will not be spread. He was fully confident that fully positive. So we, we have to be very grateful that because of Srila Prabhupada's tremendous faith and conviction, today we are able to chant Hare Krishna. Our lives have been saved. So let us express our profuse gratitude to Srila Prabhupada by taking up to the process seriously and not just being a ritualistic devotee who has some... Just like there are people who are members of Lions Club, social... So many clubs are there in which we are members. 
this is not some kind of a club or some kind some kind of a social gathering this is a place where we dedicate our lives you know we increase our commitment by chanting rounds more by taking up more responsibilities challenges for shila prabhupada's mission this is the way we express our gratitude to shila prabhupada so let us do that by commit increasing our commitment for chanting because this material world is suffering whether you are a devotee or not you have to go through a lot of suffering so let us do some serious service for krishna show our sincerity and go back to krishna after we end this life so on this most auspicious occasion i would like to uh, thank the authorities for giving me a chance to glorify shila prabhupad thank you very much hare krishna shila prabhupad ki jai anant koti vaishnav bhakta vrind ki jai